The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan. This is a Channel 11 News public affairs program dealing with the issues affecting those in the community as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Insights. Now on this week we talk about prescription drug abuse and what local agencies are striving towards to cease this problem and tackle this issue in our community. So joining me now is Donna Hardy's um, Certified Prevention Specialist from Catholic Human Services. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Can we talk a little bit about the Catholic Human Services and what your organization does? Yeah, Catholic Human Services is a local agency here in the community. We actually um, ha have services throughout all of northern Michigan and my area is prevention so we have a number of prevention specialists that go out in the community and do community awareness education do some activities in the school um, we have a life skills program and then we also have treatment um, counselors that see individuals and we have family counselors um, and other things that just deal with the needs of the community. Mm -hmm. And helping, you know, the community with uh, the prescription drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's really um, a large initiative that we have right now. We are working in conjunction with Northern Michigan Substance Abuse Services, and they, through a variety of um, looking at some of the local data, hospital admissions and treatments, and what they were seeing throughout northern Michigan, they were able to obtain a state and federal grant to really begin focusing um, a community awareness campaign on prescription drug abuse. And the campaign that we are working with with them is called be the solution. Okay. Uh, it's just a community awareness campaign that makes people aware of the issues that we're seeing with prescription drug abuse and gives them some ideas and tips, uh, prevention tips, things that they can work on to make a difference locally in their own home within mm -hmm. their community. And that really is it, just a community awareness mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah. So. Is there a drug, a prescription drug abuse problem in northern Michigan? Yes, there is. Uh, we'd like to think that, you know, it's all illegal drugs, illicit drugs that are the problem. But like it or not, right now, prescription drugs are the second most commonly abused drug behind wow. marijuana. Um, you know, some of the things that started off, you know, Right now, the national statistics, and we're seeing the same statistics locally, um, but every single day, 2,500 teenagers try a prescription narcotic to get high for the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's a significant issue that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the problem is um, the data is showing that teenagers between the age of 12 and 17 are trying these. And you know, mm -hmm. it's right behind marijuana, if you talk to our local hunt team, mm -hmm. they're seeing the same issues. Behind marijuana, prescription drug abuse, sales, um, you know, diversions, mm -hmm. those types of things are what they're spending their time on. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh -huh. it, it's just sad how it can affect and wreck an individual's life. So you definitely think the prescription drug abuse problem is more in the younger uh, well, community or an older? It, 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 it serves the gamut, you know, it's through there, but the problem is we really are seeing a lot of issues and a lot of our community awareness campaign is to stop the problem before it ever begins. Mm -hmm. Because there are a number of factors, especially with the youth, that they think it's all right. There's a misconception out there that, well, I'm just taking a Vicodin that a doctor has prescribed. I'm not doing heroin. I'm not doing cocaine. You know, I'm not doing anything like that. So it's that thing, you know, they're trying to pacify the situation, mm -hmm. saying, ah, it's not an issue. And there's not a day that goes by when I go out and do a presentation that you don't hear some kind of story about. You know, the issues mm -hmm. that we're seeing and the problem is 
this whole campaign, it, it focuses on a very simple message. It's monitor, secure, dispose. And it's okay. making people aware what do you have in the home? Mm -hmm. Because most of us store our prescriptions either in the medicine cabinet, kitchen cabinet, and that's where out on the kids sink. can have easy, easy access. access to. Right there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things. Easy access. They're in the homes. They're not going out and necessarily, you know, trying to buy or mm -hmm. get the different things. They will admit to getting it from a friend or a family mm -hmm. member and they have the easy access, they know where to obtain them. And like it or not, you know, people find the information on the internet, they know, you know, what's being abused. And I have a daughter that's a, a high school senior and you talk about some of these things and she said, yeah, mom, you know, you hear kids talking about mm -hmm. it in school, well, try this, try that. Now, I did a presentation at Michigan Works uh, a few months ago and had, I think it was about a 21-year-old young man sitting there. And, you know, after I was done, he said, thank you so much for talking about this. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm six months clean. He wow. said, I had a six-year addiction to Xanax. See, just a prescription right. drug. Because, mm -hmm. you know, do people think it's safer than illicit drugs. Is that the myth that's going that's on right now? That's the myth. You know, it really is that, okay, I'm not doing anything illegal. It's a prescription coming from a doctor. All right, you know, grandma takes it, mom or dad take it. Well, I'm just going to do it. And especially with the youth, they're experimenting. Mm. And, you know, this has no socioeconomic class level. It's not, you know, a class of people. It can happen all over. Um, you know, a good resource is over at the Sunrise Center. Brett Finzel has some data as to what they had seen previously, you know, always treated mm -hmm. alcoholics, and now half of their patients are opiate addicts. Wow. And the sad thing is, the mean age is under 30. Wow. And so it's kind of going younger and younger, mm -hmm. this issue. Yep. So what are some of the things, you know, that parents can do to help, you know, keep these pres prescription drugs out of the reach of children? Um, well, the first thing is, as I said, the message monitor. Know what you have in your home and secure them. And by securing them, you know, the optimum would be a medicine lockbox, a mm -hmm. gun safe, something like that. You know, one story that I can tell a little anecdote, I had done this to a child care provider here in Alpena County, and she has a serious medical illness and had some pretty hefty drugs that she had to take. And she kept dealing with her doctor saying, I am not feeling better. Mm -hmm. And through a course of, you know, six, eight months, he finally did some blood work and said she was supposed to be taking Oxycontin. Mm -hmm. He did blood work and he said, I can't help you if you don't help yourself. It's not showing exactly. up in your blood system. She said, I take my medicine twice a day. She had a worker in her home who was, was putting a placebo wow. in, was stealing her prescription for almost six to eight months and she wasn't feeling well. So through the process of turning this in, she now stores her meds in a, in a, box. Yeah, a mm -hmm. small gun safe she actually got. But the beauty of that is she has a eight-year-old daughter when mm -hmm. this happened and the little girl had gotten some prescription cough syrup and when she brought it home she said mom don't we have to lock up my medicine so it was just a very simple message mm -hmm. and that's what we want to tell people that's you know? why you want to bring awareness right yeah. the simple message is you know you have it we're not trying to stop people, you know, doctors are out there mm -hmm. treating pain and, you know, there are issues that you have to take these meds. But know what you have, know what they look like, keep them out mm -hmm. of the norm. Don't keep them out for easy access because you have family coming over, exactly. especially with the holidays. You know, this is a mm -hmm. great course of action to just train ourselves. Well, put them in the bedroom, exactly. lock, them, lock up. them up, right? Mm -hmm. keep them out of the norm. I happen to do my grandpa's meds for him. He's 88 mm -hmm. years old. Um, so you need to let, especially the elderly know, because they have so many prescriptions, mm -hmm. that, you know, don't leave access out. Exactly. Don't tell everybody what you're taking. And individuals who get your meds from Medco and mm -hmm. they come in a white mailer, know when your pills are there. Exactly. You know, know when they come in, get them out of the way. Um, but monitor secure and then dispose. If 
you Just have those been three things. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you gave us so much great information and thank you for joining us here on insights. And if we want to just get a little bit more information or parents want more tips on this, what can they, what, what can, can they, they do? Um, well, first off, there's an excellent website. It's drugfreenorthernmichigan.com. Just spell it all out. I Perfect. know it's lengthy and also visit, um, our Facebook page. It's drug free Northern Michigan, be the solution. And on that, you're going to see daily all conversations yes. from prevention workers going out, mm -hmm. you know, spreading the message. Okay. So. Well, thank you, Donna. But after the break, Donna will still be uh, sitting here talking to me about local programs to enforce this issue and more statistics about prescription drug abuse. Welcome back to Insights. Now sitting with me still now is Donna Hardy's from the Catholic uh, Human Services Center. Now we are going to talk a little bit about the local efforts. Mm -hmm. Again, you know the project of Northern Michigan Substance Abuse Services and what our local community is doing to help prevent yep. this issue. And you know, as we said before, we have our, you know, monitor, secure, dispose. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things individuals need to be aware of, we have a great initiative um, throughout the state of Michigan um, called the Yellow Jug Program, especially for disposal efforts. Okay. And we had talked about monitoring, securing, and now exactly. we're going to, you know, dispose. Well, Everybody, you know, wants to go back to their pharmacy, take back their unused prescriptions, mm -hmm. things that have expired, they no longer want to take. Right now, the way the federal law reads, um, an individual can't take back to a pharmacy, even though they have the yellow jug program, they can't take back um, controlled substances. Okay. So why, why is that? Why is that? It, it's the way the federal law is. There's a chain of command, you know, to ensure that there's not abuse of these. So mm -hmm. um, right now the only way to dispose of controlled substances is through law enforcement or a national take back day. Okay. So the categories of drugs that we're talking about when we talk controlled substances, you first have your opiates, your pain mm -hmm. type meds, um, and then you have your uh, CNS depressants, things such as Xanax, um, you know, anxiety mm -hmm. type meds. And then also your stimulants, things to treat like ADHD. Okay. Um, so those are the meds that we're talking about that if you had back surgery, knee surgery, and you have some Vicodin or Oxycontin mm -hmm. left over, and we always hear individuals say, oh, I got a script and I took three of them, I didn't need it, mm -hmm. now I've got them I've heard in my freezer, in my sock drawer, whatever. How do I get rid of them? But they can't return those ones. Not to the pharmacy, but they can return them to law enforcement or on a national take back day. And we are so fortunate here in Alpena County because our police mm -hmm. post, our Alpena State Police Post, collects on a regular basis. Okay. Um, they do. You know, with mm -hmm. Hunt here in town, you know, we're very, very fortunate. I believe they say the first Wednesday of every month, but if you've had a death in the family, mm -hmm. if you hear this segment and you say, wow, I, I just, I've got people coming over, you know, for mm -hmm. Christmas. I don't want to have these in the house. Mm -hmm. Call up the state police post. They'll let you know when and you, can, you drop can drop them off. There. Also watch for the national take back days. It usually occurs twice a year, April, September, that time period. And watch for those initiatives, okay. you know, because you can dispose of them free of charge mm -hmm. and, you know, get them out of the system. If by some chance you have them, you see this program, you hear a little bit about it and you say, I want to get rid of them. I, I don't want the issue. Um, we recommend please don't flush for environmental purposes. Okay. You know? So if now, what you are have some to, of the disposal tips that um, you know the community can do to dispose yeah. of these drugs? What we recommend is to take a compound such as used coffee grounds or kitty litter. That doesn't have to be used, <laughs> but, um, but it's, a good, yeah. it's a good way to Yep, and so what we recommend, out. possibly dissolve them, crush them, put them in that medium, tie them up, secure them, put them in your trash. They're gonna go through the landfill mm -hmm. and they'll go through treatment, so we don't have any groundwater issues then oh, okay. with those types of things. So it doesn't dissolve, so don't flush it, yeah. put it in coffee grounds or kitty litter. Yeah to be thrown out. Okay. Yeah. And have you seen a problem with uh, kids taking these prescription drugs and selling them at school and other and to their friends? Um, there's there's a slight issue with that. I, I mean, there's definitely money to be made. Um, 
I would recommend getting a hold of Hunt to find out what the current street value is. But of course, it's always an issue. If they find out there's a profit to be made, you know, there are people that are drug seekers, doctor shopping, you know, whether they're abusing themselves or trying to make a profit off that, it's always something to be aware. And as mm -hmm. parents, we need to have that constant communication and educate our kids, mm -hmm. you know. Don't try something. It, it's sort of like the whole synthetics issue that mm -hmm. we had in the community last year. It's, you know, people sharing information, educating their kids, educating other parents. Exactly. and. What we're doing now is that whole effort is continuing and really focusing on the prescription drug abuse problem. So the synthetic one kind of stopped and now it's transforming into this prescription well, drug Well, no, no, prescription drugs have always been there. What you see with drug abuse issue, there's always a constant new emerging product that you have to mm -hmm. deal with. We happened, you know, in our area to have an issue with the synthetics for exactly. a time period. Mm -hmm. And of course, legislation has been passed and we had a community resource group that really mm -hmm. focused on educating and shutting down some of those places that were selling them. Now, has it totally gone away no, no. parents mm -hmm. still need to you know stay on top of it watch for behaviors and different issues and if you see anything suspicious of course report it to mm -hmm. you know law enforcement um, and one thing that um, I didn't mention with disposal and this is part of our local initiative um, that group that dealt with synthetics is now um, you know focusing efforts on prescription drug abuse so um, the Alpena City Police, you know, may want to talk to them, but uh, Chief Jet said, if you're in the city of Alpena mm -hmm. and you have a prescription, you're elderly, you want it mm -hmm. out of your house, give them a call, them a call. Okay. at the city police post and they'll do it. That's, of course, only in the city confines, mm -hmm. but that's another avenue for people to take advantage of that. So, well, yeah. And the um, the start of people being able to drop off their prescription drugs at the police stations, has this started because of the problem with prescription drugs or is this something that um, has been around for a while? It's been around for a while. You're just seeing more promotion and advertising as people become more aware of the problem. Um, okay. But we were very fortunate through Hunt and the police post that they saw a need and they've had that ongoing for a number of years. Mm -hmm. But with the national take back days and some of those things, the promotion, it's just becoming you know, more aware and people are taking more advantage of that. So you guys are bringing, you know, obviously more awareness to this issue and you mm -hmm. really think this is hitting home with the community members, you know, bringing this awareness to this yeah, issue? I, I think people just assume, wow, that that can't be out there. I mean, you know, when you throw out some of the statistics, like since the year 2009, um, prescription drug-related deaths in Michigan surpassed traffic fatalities. Wow. So it, that's it throws something, it, you know, that's like a very surprising number. You don't really expect right? that. No. I, I mean, you think all of people that, you know, die unexpectedly in a car crash, and now we have more drug, you know, prescription drug-related deaths than we do traffic fatalities in the state of Michigan. So it's mm -hmm. not just an Alpena County thing, but like it or not, we are seeing it here. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are being abused. And with this whole effort, we want to make sure that people don't think exactly. it's a medical issue or doctors are, exactly. you know. Just bringing more awareness. Right. It's it. bringing more awareness because we're a society that, you know, I think sometimes we'd like a mm -hmm. quick fix and, yeah. you know, we want our prescriptions and exactly. we have them there and we have a tendency to be hoarders. Yeah. Oh, keep we, it in no, the we, no, we, I think we all definitely have that problem. Well, thank you, Adonna, again for joining me. Okay. And coming up next, we'll have Brett Finzel from the Sunrise Center. One. Welcome back to Insights. Joining me now is Brett Finzel, Executive Director of the Sunrise Center, to talk about the new Family Center going to be open in December and how it'll help people, more people and mothers tackle the uh, problem of drug abuse. So Brett, can we talk a little bit first about the Sunrise Center and then the newly remodeled Family Center that you're going to open? Sure. Well, the Sunrise Center is a residential treatment center that offers detoxification, short and long-term residential, as well as recovery housing and post recovery supports. It's been in operation since 1991 and we currently serve men and women at this time. 
we chose to remodel an, another building which we purchased for the Family Recovery Center because we were moving into a, a model that would allow women to bring their children okay. because when women can't bring their uh, children are the major barrier for women to seek treatment. They mm -hmm. can't. They don't have someone to leave their children with. Someone that's not safe. So they uh, they choose to not come. This way, they'll be able to bring their children with them. We'll be able to treat the child at the same time as the mother. There'll okay. also be a very intensive parenting element okay. that allow them to strengthen their relationship with their children. Uh, and there's so there's a there's a pretty intricate model there for that. Is prescription drug abuse uh, prevalent? I mean, do a lot of mothers abuse prescription drugs? Is that kind of who you see in your center? Well, what you, what you see uh, is that there's been a trend that has happened in northern, in northern Michigan, pretty much in the northern 30 counties. And Alpena is not an exception to that rule. Mm -hmm. uh, prescription drug abuse started growing in number in about 2005. You saw that probably in 2005 about 60 percent of the people that came into the Sunrise Center were alcohol related. Okay. Uh, and about 11 percent or so were, were opiates that were prescription drug mm -hmm. opiates. Uh, that would be your Oxycontins, your morphine, your Vicodins, mm -hmm. your uh, Percocets, all of those kind of things. Uh, well, you know, last year it was 46 percent of our admissions were opiate admissions from prescription drug use. So that's so, increased. Yeah, I think that from 11 to 46 percent in a matter of seven years. Wow. That's, so it became huge. It kind of exploded mm -hmm. is what happened. And you also have kind of a, a, a secondary issue that's with that, which is the issue of uh, uh, heroin use because heroin use is an outbreak of uh, addiction, of uh, prescription drug abuse in the sense of that when a person is getting a prescription, let's say they're getting it legally, mm -hmm. but then eventually they can't get it for whatever reason. The doc decides they're not going to prescribe that anymore, the person doesn't want that anymore, whatever that, that might be. Uh, they end up, uh, they try to seek it on the street and eventually they get it on the street but it's it's let's say eighty dollars a pill or something mm -hmm. like that well eventually they can't afford that obviously heroin is about fifteen dollars a pack so what happens is they start using heroin instead of the prescription drug that they had started on for whatever reason uh, and as a result you saw a massive heroin influx in Alpena as well okay. a few years ago and that has remained with us so you see a pretty high heroin and morphine use in the community as well. So we do are seeing a, a drug abuse, a prescription drug abuse in the Alpena community right now. Yeah, yeah, you, you really do, you really do. And again, prescription drug abuse is pocketed, it's always been pocketed. It doesn't seem to be something that affects everybody across the board. It affects communities and certain communities are higher. And in northern Michigan is it's been noted for that, that we have this high use of prescription uh, drug use. And uh, that brings it, and there's some major issues with prescription drug use from a treatment standpoint that aren't necessarily there for some other drugs. As an example, many of the times a person might have a, uh, they might have had a legitimate pain issue when they started using their prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then they started moving into addiction. Well, now we still have the pain issue to contend with. And so how do you do that? The doctor doesn't want to prescribe the prescription mm -hmm. anymore, but they still need to treat that pain. So we have to kind of work with that. Uh, many of the other uh, drugs that are uh, abused might be psychiatric in nature, mm -hmm. the ADHD drugs as an example, something like that. Well, you still have a person that has that problem. They still have that issue, but now they can't take the medication because they've been abusing it mm -hmm. or they've moved into addiction. How do you continue to treat that issue? So it's a pretty complicated issue. That it way. definitely is. Well, let's talk about the steps you take with some of your residential um, people that come into your center. What steps do you take to help them with their recovery process? Well, normally if they came in and they were on a prescription drug that they, were, that they had found they, they were abusing, they might need detoxification. So they're going to be taken off of that drug. And that drug is, uh, you know, we're going to use another drug to help them off of that drug. But in about three to five days, three to seven days, they're going to be off that drug. And then they're probably going to uh, remain in residential treatment a while while we're working with those other issues, trying to figure out exactly how does one Mm -hmm. uh, do that. We're going to be talking to the primary care physician or we're going to be talking to the psychiatrist. We're going to get an integrated plan with that person of how they go about do that. And then they're going to learn how to do coping skills that might help with that. Okay. As an example, relaxation is a great thing to know if you have a pain condition because actually a lot of times relaxation can help reduce the pain mm -hmm. uh, without even taking a medication. So they would learn those skills or they would learn other ways of, of uh, you know, 
handling stress and those kind mm -hmm. of things, all those contribute to a pain condition, as an example. And then eventually, we're working with family as well to okay. reintegrate them back mm -hmm. into their family. And then sometimes some people have to stay in transitional housing or recovery housing until they, they're straight long enough and then they would step back into their families as well. So with the new family center that's going to be remodeled and that's going to open in the beginning of December, correct? Well, we're hoping it's in December, yes. Well, do you yeah. think um, more women are going to come in to seek treatment because they can bring their child in? Yeah, I think that you're going to see more women. Well, that's a barrier that will be removed so more women will access treatment. Uh, the other, there's another offshoot with that that'll be helpful is that a lot of times if women uh, are using and their children have, they have been identified as a, as a problem or they're a problem and they choose to separate the mother and the child like under a child protection services mm -hmm. scenario, then you have a reunification plan that has to happen. And this way, we're hoping that the child won't necessarily have to be separated and placed in the foster care or something like that. They can, they can remain with the mother because the mother will be in a safe place. She won't be using. And then we can work to strengthen that family without ever having to separate them. Because once you separate them, then it's a long exactly. process to be able to get your kids back. And so that's, it's definitely going to yeah. help tackle that issue. It'll help so if people are looking more. for more information on your center, what can they what can they do? Well, they can look us up on the on the on our website at www.sunrise.com center.org they can look us up on Facebook uh, they can call the the coordinating agency which is the state from the Michigan Department of Community Health has a, a coordinating agency that oversees the northern area and that's Northern Michigan Substance Abuse Services and that's at 1-800-686-0749 that is that's a complete access center so if they had a problem they could call there they could discuss their issue and they would be able to sort it out whether they needed outpatient or detoxification or residential treatment mm -hmm. or if they just needed support of that sort, maybe a recovery coach, something like that. Well, thank you, Brett, for coming and joining us, and Certainly. congratulations on your new remodeling and yeah, the new family thanks. center. Definitely thanks, will, we're real excited about you, that, too. Exactly, will help you know families and more people tackle the um, drug abuse issue. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brett. Sounds great, man. Well, that'll do it for us on this week's uh, edition of Insights. We will see you next week. Insights into Northeast Michigan has been a Channel 11 News public affairs program. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email us at the web address on the screen. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation, all rights reserved.